Libra, it's me, Gregory Scott. Thank you for joining me. It's a real joy and privilege and honor to be able to be here with you today and to be able to give you this forecast. So thank you for joining me and thank you for listening to what I have to say about the astrology and the tarot for February 2015. I know you have other choices, so I'm glad you're here with me and I appreciate it. Okay, so let me make it worth your while, or at least try to. The 3rd of February is the full moon, and that happens in Leo in your 11th house of hopes and dreams. Okay, Jupiter joins that full moon, and it's Jupiter is the good luck factor, and it's good fortune. So really expect one of your, or some of your hopes and dreams to become reality on the 3rd. It looks really good for that, because when Jupiter comes in, it's growth regardless of what you do or what the world does, it grows, things grow. And your hopes and dreams get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they also become realized. So that's a great way to start the month. Neptune is in Pisces for the whole month, and that's in your sixth house of daily routine. And I really see that you're giving up a lot of your spare leisure time to help other people, and to help out other people who can't help themselves, but you're really generous with your time. It could be also that you're giving to family or that you're giving to work, but really you're not um, so miserly with your own time. You're very generous and very giving with it. Don't, that's nice, it's really nice, but don't, especially in a working sector, don't let people take advantage of that. You know, if, if you get paid for 30 hours a week and you're doing 40 just because you enjoy it so much, that's great, but don't allow the employer to expect that as the norm, because that's not right. <laughs> okay. Mercury has been in retrograde from the 21st of January, and it comes out of retrograde on the 11th of February. And that's a good thing, because Mercury is the planet of communication. And when the planet of communication seems to be going backwards, things get complicated, there's misunderstandings, things aren't as clear and as easy as they ought to be. And that's particularly true for you in regards to your children and in regards to your romantic, uh, intimate relationships. So things start to get a little bit easier around the 11th. So if the kids have been r running around circles around you and throwing things, then they might start to calm down a little bit because you'll be able to say the kind of things that they need to hear to calm down. Do you see what I mean? Um, if your relationship has been dead as a doornail for a while and there's been no joy in it or you've constantly been griping at each other or you haven't been able to understand where the other person's coming from then you're going to start to get back on the same page a little bit so mercury isn't just like communication i turn on my computer and i write an email and it's broken or i try and say something and i can't get the words out it's about the interaction between different people and remember you're not the only one influenced by mercury retrograde so is everyone else so everyone else is struggling too so it's it gets easier and you start to understand each other more on the 11th of Feb. Think of it as the um, cosmic cell phone that starts working again on the 11th of February. All right. Um, the new moon occurs on the 18th. Oh, let me look at Valentine's Day first on the 14th for you. And that's really good for you because your sun is in your fifth house of romance. So v Valentine's Day is one where you can really um, make positive inroads. Like you can take a relationship and really get it to grow and really apply yourself to it. So if you want this to work, you can really make it work. You can plan a really nice um, romantic dinner. And Libra, so far you're the only sign of the zodiac that I've really seen that has been a that that's able to make something else happen for someone else. Everyone else is really concerned with their own stuff at the moment. So you're the one who can buy the, the rose petals and to scatter them over the bed. You're the one to buy the chocolates and to put them... I don't know, I don't even know where you put them. <laughs> I'm a Virgo, so when I think of chocolates, I think of what kind of a mess are they going to leave. I know that's very unromantic. Thank goodness you're not like that because you're a Libra and you can actually do something nice. So really tap into that and make that happen. Your partner will appreciate it. If you're single, that's fine. You can, um, you can create a nice date. You can plan a date and you can make that a wonderful date for the other person. You know, a lot of people go on dates and say, oh, is this going to be the right person for me? Are they going to be able to offer me what I want, blah, blah, blah. No, very few people go on this date and say, um, what can I give to this other person and how can we connect? 
but you can this month, so good for you. On the 18th, the new moon occurs in Aquarius, again in the Romance sector, so the focus on Romance continues. Mars and Venus go into Aries in your 7th house on the 20th, that's Mars, and the 21st, that's Venus. Um, and what that means is that you're really able to conceive of a relationship that works. So I think all of this giving that you've been doing during February and helping out other people really um, creates something bigger than the two of you. And I'm talking very much about you in connection with other people. That's what February is. So you're really tapping into the St. Valentine's Day spirit here because you're all about romance, you're all about other people, and you're really... Um, that's your focus. It's not money, it's not work, it's not education, it's not legal issues, it's romance, it's other people. That's what you're concerned with, Libra. So you're a great person to be with because this is important to you at this time of the year. Um, I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. If you look at the tarot card, the lovers, you've got two people. You've got a man and a woman, and between them, they create an angel. And that's the kind of thing that you can do this month. By your application... And by your partner's application, the two of you can create something bigger than yourselves. So it could be that you create a wonderful, harmonious atmosphere in the home. It could be that you conceive a child. It could, but it's the two of you create something together. And that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Right. You finish the month here on the 28th with a grand cross happening. And it occurs between your family, your relationships, your work, your fuck. So you may be a little bit scatterbrained at the end of the month and you may start to feel a bit frazzled because everything's just all over the place. So 28th, try and calm things down. Don't try and do everything at once. Um, realize that you're just one person. You can only do so much and just focus on one thing at a time so you don't get swamped. Let me choose a card here for you to give you an overall theme. And I was just kidding about the chocolates, by the way. I'm not that OCD. <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm some nut. All right, so the card I've got for you is the Six of Swords in reverse. And the Six of Swords usually is about um, moving forward and kind of recovering and, thing, and waiting for things to get better. Because it's in reverse, it means that you can make things better by applying yourself. And that really ties into all of those things I spoke about with... Um, the relationship sector, that you're the one who's able to really create a wonderful, harmonious environment. So really, don't be afraid to act. And if you've got a great idea to make things wonderful and charming and happy and beautiful, then take that, act on it and make it happen. The other person most certainly will appreciate it. Have a great month. If you'd like a private reading with me, you can order one on my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, it's important so that the videos are actually found. And um, you can also email me. The, re the address is readings at gregoryscott.co.uk. Have a great fab, and I'll speak to you soon. I'm using the Radiant Rider Weight deck for this reading. Let's see what's coming up. Okay, well.